Welcome everyone to our November PL Endres All Hands meeting. Our agenda for the day, we have a quick working group uh, intro for people who might be joining us for the first time uh, or virtually joining us for the first time. We record these and put them up publicly on YouTube. And we have a ton of spotlights because a bajillion things shipped during Lab Week at DevConnect. And the last month has been extremely exciting and productive. So thank you everyone for um, sharing the great spotlights. And we'll actually have a deep dive into Lab Week at the end and save some time, hopefully for Q&A. Um, feel free to also drop Q&A in the chat as we go along so that um, any speakers can uh, update um, and share share snaps about the amazing things. So without further ado, we'll get started. Um, as a quick reminder for folks, uh, the PL Andres Working Group is one of many amazing communities of engineers, researchers, and developers uh, in the PL network, uh, helping drive breakthroughs in computing to push humanity forward. We get to work across a plethora of amazing computing projects with a special focus on IPFS, Lapita-P, and Filecoin. But there's actually many awesome projects that we'll be hearing more about um, over the course of this meeting um, and that you know uh, operate in our space where we're building uh, amazing digital technologies that can help lock the web open and enable uh, digital human superpowers. Our mission is to scale and unlock new breakthroughs for IPFS, Filecoin, Lapita-P, and related protocols. We do it in three main ways driving those new breakthroughs in protocol utility and capability, scaling network native research and development, and stewarding and growing our OSS projects, networks, and communities. We have a ton of amazing groups that participate in the PL Andros Working Group. We'll be working to update this even more over the course of the new year as we have more uh, groups joining this uh, kind of working group venue for uh, engineering and research coordination. Um, and this is the strategy that we've been doing over the past year. Uh, so we're closing out 2023. This is our last all hands of the year. Um, we will not be doing a December all hands, just as a heads up. Uh, and these are the four main components we've been focused on. Uh, first, critical system stewardship and growth. Then helping grow teams and networks in the PL ecosystem, uh, building upon these core protocols. Uh, and then finally, robust storage and retrieval and compute over Filecoin state and data. Um, here's a a version of, of a map of breakthroughs that we've been tracking over the past many quarters. And as you can see, we're just about there. Many of these check marks turned green just in the past couple of weeks, and we will get uh, spotlights on a number of those launches as well. Um, we, and I'm sure we'll hear more about some of the things that are shipping just before the end of the, the year as well. Um, I believe uh, Granite Fast Finality has is a thing that we are working on, but is definitely not expected to ship in Q4. Uh, it's more of a, a Q1 activity. Um, and with a further ado, I'll pass off to each lead to give an update into our Q4 OKRs. Matthew? Sure, I'm gonna fill in for Lauren and give the, the first set of updates on critical systems, uh, keeping them running. On the Filecoin uh, network side, NV21 is scheduled to go out on the 12th. The only change here is that movable partitions were removed due to some late breaking bugs, but they should be coming back soon. On the gateway side, there is currently a proof of concept out uh, for the rate limit implementation and landing page. And in general, with all the critical stewardship, the services are being maintained as we continue to transition to a network team model and would consider that green. Um, Steve, I'm gonna take on the next section. Yeah, great. Thank you. So concerning uh, nucleation, the uh, protocol foundations, those have been announced. They were discussed at Lab Week. There is a protocol.ai blog post, um, but those are just getting start up, uh, sorry, started in on and being set up now. The engineering team entities have been decided, but we're just getting underway on getting those set up. Uh, and concerning funding, you know, the Probe Lab team in particular has had success with getting verbal commits from users that it has approached. We've generally been getting the message out, but uh, have a lot more um, certainly have a lot more to fill in for Shipyard's 2024 budget, and Shipyard is kind of the conglomeration of these Endres, IPFS, and LibP2P teams. Uh, and so right now, the nucleation for these teams is actually moving back to mid-January to land just all the logistics and have a smooth transition, but a lot of work here underway. So that's why that one is not marked as green, but we're we're on trajectory for our new, new dates. Um, in terms of general public commons funding structures, these what we've called blue funds for IPFS, LibP2P, and Filecoin. Those are um, those have been announced and they're being booted up, but they um, we don't have the Open Impact Foundation cells yet. Um, that will be completing end of this year or in early January. And in terms of IPFS camp, uh, we haven't yet announced the time and date because it looks like maybe our previous plans may need to fall through. So more to to come on that one, but um, not not you know not not green yet for that guy. Back to you, Matthew. 
Cool. Megan, uh, so data onboarding and retrievals or getting stuff in and out. And the theme of this month is going to be lab week, as you will see. So on the onboarding side, the beta of the DStore REST API shipped at lab week. On Lotus Miner side, we're also green. Sturdy Post is in testing. I'm not going to say anything more about that because we're going to see a highlight on that a little later in this all hands today. Uh, continuing the lab week theme on the station Meridian side, uh, the beta is out. Download it today if you want to get your payouts. Uh, OKRs are already exceeded in terms of number of active installs. But again, I'm not going to say too much about that yet because we're about to see a spotlight on that a little later today. But congratulations to the team. Um, on the IPFS website side, we, the data is now flowing into Probe Lab and being monitored. We're considering this yellow for now because the performance is still outside of the goals that we're looking to see there. So the team is having discussions on concrete steps to get the performance and reliability up there. And finally, on the Filecoin Saturn side, the uh, private beta for content providers, i.e. websites, is now active. And uh, again, I'm not going to say too much about that because we're going to do another quick spotlight later today. So uh, a lot of updates where I say I'm not going to say anything about them until later. Um, but let's keep moving on. Things are looking good. Uh, Aslan, you want to take it away? Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Great updates. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Upgrading Falcon with new L2 capabilities and compute over data land. We have two yellow, two greens, but I must uh, say as a disclaimer, yellows are borderline yellow, so they are almost green. We are excitedly waiting for the end of quarter uh, to hit the mark there too. So on compute over data land, uh, we launched uh, we launched the testnet and we had a great love week and there were uh, there, there were a few successful talks uh, and in terms of the number of uh, com com compute users um, com uh, com computer data jobs per day we are peaking much more than ten percent of the golem total jobs but since it's the peak number we didn't mark ourselves as green and fundraising efforts are in progress uh, on FDM land. We are very excited to share that we are uh, closing the quarter with a uh, green mark in the new capabilities land foundational changes in FEM. Uh, code upgrade is done. Um, F, uh, FI, uh, FIP is in progress. Placeholder removal was the scope earlier in this quarter, so it's not included in this assessment. Pluggable syscalls in FEM is completed, and it is in progress to add it to IPC stack to make it available for customers. And lastly, further FVM customizations are in discussion with IPC team. Um, in terms of FVM adoption, uh, we are at 32 million fill total value locked and currently in top 27 in DeFi Lama. But two weeks ago, we hit the top 20 uh, in DeFi Lama list. So we are hopeful that by end of quarter, uh, we might uh, achieve our ambitious goal in terms of uh, our DeFi targets here. Uh, in terms of storage deals, we already exceeded our targets. They are almost at 3,200 storage deals done on calibration net with our aggreg aggregators. Uh, and we hit the 200 teams building on FVM. We are uh, about to have our on-chain aggregator in December, who is going to be Spheron uh, later uh, this quarter. Uh, and in terms of IPC, IPC team completed the transition away from Lotus into Fendermont. Uh, and we had a uh, we had a successful launch of IPC M2.5 uh, uh, during Love Week. We had a very um, well attended, exciting uh, lunch event uh, in Istanbul alongside demonstrations and workshops on IPC and mycelium. While stability issues continue uh, to plague, but uh, we are safe to solve uh, those problems uh, by the M3 audit freeze in mid December. And we, we have more than three launch partners. They're all planning to be running their subnets pretty soon, uh, later in December when we got the stability. There's going to be a spotlight on IPC later today too, so I stole some of the show, but uh, looking forward to hear more later today from Mikhail. Awesome. We have uh, so many spotlights to highlight. We'll continue to blaze through so we get time, um, but on to IPFS for our project update. Uh, hello, uh, IPFS uh, making uh, the, web, the web work peer-to-peer -peer with content addressing so that uh, content can be verified, uh, as we all know. So some key metrics and uh, KPIs uh, on the top left, we're seeing um, a slight decrease in the number of, uh, of clients that um, have used the network the last couple of weeks. 
which is kind of uh, is a little bit related to what we see on the top right with uh, some flakiness in the um, network performance in terms of time to first provide the record because some uh, quite a few peers have been um, balancing between being online and not being very stable. Plus the fact that as we see in the um, blue and orange plot there, we have a massive increase of more than 100% of IPNS uh, requests in the network, and that might be uh, affecting a little bit, but there is nothing that we have seen from the protocol or the network health performance. It's just users fluctuating in uh, the peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, IPNI um, performance have been uh, very stable as usual. Um, yeah, and that's it. GitHub activity is uh, stable with some uh, indicators going slightly down, uh, investigating why this is um, why this is the case. So next slide on um, updates from the uh, IBFS uh, protocol implementation highlights. We held IBFS Connect in uh, in Istanbul during lab week uh, with uh, um, with Fission driving it. So uh, great thanks. It has been a very successful event. Lots of uh, um, lots of great talks which you can find in the recordings, which are linked there. Um, and lots of appetite for similar events in the future. There has been a bid for uh, an event in China. Not confirmed, though, but um, uh, yeah, just, just to keep in mind, highly recommend following the recordings. There have been multiple tracks with very interesting talks. Um, we have, The team has um, just formed the IPFS DAPS working group with the purpose of improving implementations and tooling uh, to make IPFS-based DAPs basically, you know, perform um, at higher SLAs and as users would want them. Uh, you can sign up for future events in that Luma link. I can send it later in the chat. Uh, the notes and everything are there, and there is already a lot of interest from Ethereum-based um, applications, which is very encouraging. Um, on the Helia front, there is performance now tracked at problem.io, and you can find the uh, fourth monthly project report with all the great updates, plus a great talk at IPFS Connect. Uh, on Kubo land, there is uh, Kubo 024 that shipped with uh, content blocking now, which has been um, part of the gateways, but now lives in Kubo as well. It is an opt-in feature, so you have to go and check how exactly to uh, to turn it on. Uh, it's not difficult, but it's not by default. Um, several updates on the IBNS front to make it faster. And an exciting new um, Boxo-based gate gateway, which is called uh, Rainbow, already shows very promising results and will soon be uh, the default for IPFS.io and other gateways. And um, yeah, we're, we've already get, been getting uh, anecdotal evidence and uh, you know um, per, uh, experience from uh, production users like Filebase that it's uh, yeah the best thing since sliced bread, as they said. Um, and in terms of upcoming, uh, Kubo 025 will be coming before the end of the year. And um, yeah, as also discussed last um, in the last all hands, and Steve mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, IPFS will be taking its uh, next step and becoming a foundation of its own uh, with the PL and DRESS, uh, IPFS and ProBlock teams uh, becoming part of the PL network. Uh, instead of being part of PLGO. Um, so there will be um, lots of, um, yeah, there, there is lots of potential for new uh, for new work there and collaboration. So get in touch in those links if you, um, if you want to collaborate. Uh, the team is raising funding already from several um, funders, PLGO being one of them, but not the only one. Uh, so uh, collaboration is very important as we uh, take this next step. Thank you very much. Thank you, Giannis. I'll take this one. Um, so libp2p, it's a set of specifications for a modular network stack focused on building ad hoc and metastable peer-to-peer -peer networks. We have lots of implementations in many different languages. libp2p is available for every context from embedded and mobile devices to global enterprise cloud computing, and even the browser native environment. So the KPIs up in the upper left-hand corner of our slide, 
show that we're seeing a slight decrease in nodes in, in P2P networks, although there is an effort to incorporate more the P2P networks in the future, in the near future, so that we have more accurate numbers on, on a total global scale. Um, we're seeing a continued slight growth in contributors and people involved in the project, even though we're seeing a slight dip due to Lab Week. <laughs> um, we see that every time we have an event. Yeah, some quick highlights for Lib P2P. As with everybody, Lib P2P is nucleating um, along with all the other Endres teams. It was announced at Lab Week. Uh, there's a video there. We had a really great Lib P2P day in Lab Week. There's a long playlist of great talks. I encourage everybody to, to uh, take a look. We have an upcoming talk at Phil Bangalore and um, a new uh, smaller scale Lib P2P day being planned by Waku Hacker House. Uh, on the technical front, I'm really excited to announce that WebRTC Private to Private is slated to be released, and it is going to finally close the loop on browser to browser ad hoc peer to peer networking. Um, I'm super excited about that. Anyway, uh, on to implementation updates. We had a great release out of uh, the GoLib P2P team. Um, Really big news that we have our first 1.0 release of the JS Lib P2P. So we had our first, uh, well, we have the 1.0 release of JS Lib P2P. Um, Russ Lib P2P, we had uh, version 53 out. Um, I want to highlight that the Java implementation of Lib P2P hit their 1.0 release back in September, and we failed to mention it. So I want to um, make that right by pointing it out here. Um, and then there's also continued work on other implementations like C, C++, Lib P2P had a new release recently. And there's a lot of activity going on in the NIM implementation and .NET keeps being maintained regularly. Um, that's it for Lib P2P. I'll, I'll hand it off to talk about Filecoin. Great. Filecoin, we're trying to build a crypto power a decentralized, robust storage network. Quickly talking about Filecoin network storage capacity. Uh, we are just around um, 25 exabytes of QAP and we're a little bit below 10 exabytes of robot power in the network. Still a lot of capacity for data to be onboarding the network. Um, we are over, oh my God, we're across like 1.5 exabytes of data stored in the Filecoin and we're approaching two exabytes. Maybe let's making that a end of year goal. We will see how that goes. Uh, with uh, FEM, we have more and more smart user smart contracts being deployed on the network. We are approaching uh, over 24, like 100 contracts being deployed and over 12.3 million Filecoin being locked in the uh, user smart contracts. And highlights for the Filecoin. Uh, first, uh, early 21, the juicy water, watermelon upgrade is finally coming. And the Lotus have shipping the q releases while the minimal um, and the true release of v 124.0 and also a, a MIDI feature release v 125.0 a both stable release has been published about two or two weeks ago we encourage all the node operators storage providers starting to upgrade their node and be ready for the upgrade that's coming on december the 12th uh, with the feature releases we're including a lot of the storage provider um, enhancement features including integrating with super rational cell c2 on the binary uh, depend on the GPU you are using, you might, uh, you can expect a 2 to 5 times speed up uh, on the C2 process. We are also fixing a lot of bugs on our on streaming workers so that you can serve your channel uh, to, to your data users. And for ETH API uh, users, we added new tracing uh, to, to, to the Lotus API. Um, at the same time, we're adding native actor event support so that users um, especially explorers and monitor system, you can subscribe with Falcon Plus um, actors to keep getting updated about the new activity happening in the network. And the whole, the F3 team, uh, Falcon Fast Finale team has completed protocol design for Granite and the FIP is finally coming soon. It's been a long time coming. When the FIP is updated, please, please, please Please, please, please help us review and leave comment if you have any feedback for us. And challenges and opportunities. Um, sorry, I didn't finish my sentence there. Um, during the early 21 testing, we realized some area of the Falcon L1 protocol is a little bit too complicated for us to even improve and evolve right now. 
So we should, as core devs, as a community, we should seeking opportunities to simplify that so that Falcon can be a better protocol for decentralized storage. Um, the Proof team and the CryptoNet team are working on NLAB ProRap. With NLAB ProRap, a more streamlined ceiling pipeline will be enabled. Um, storage provider can onboarding sector with a reduced cost, and we can fully enable ceiling as a service uh, to serve the storage onto the network. We are already working on NG22. There's a lot of opportunities to be unblocking. The first one, we want to switch to the new DRAM network so that uh, the, the LOE, if they want to, they can deprecate the, the, the older network uh, if they want to. Uh, we are also hoping to improve the market. Uh, and also, I know a lot of people have been waiting for this one. We are further enable direct data onboarding uh, so that, again, all the data clients doesn't have to make a storage deal uh, before they put data uh, into the file queen network. Uh, last but not but not least, Frederick and Step has been working on uh, upgrade actors. I think the PR landed in FBM and a fifth draft is open. Uh, that means you can have upgradable actors in the file queen network. Awesome. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, can we move forward? to our spotlights. Um, it seems like we have a lot of updates, so I'll, I'll keep mine short. Forest is an alternative Filecoin client. And in the past year, we've been focusing on infrastructure. Uh, we are hosting a completely separate snapshot service from, from Philops. Uh, our snapshots are generated in a completely different code path than, than Lotus, um, but we're still backwards compatible. Um, we are able to generate these snapshots slightly faster than, than the regular um, uh, snapshots. So if you want to use them, like you'll be able to sync like just a few minutes faster. Other than this, we are hosting um, a copy of the entire Filecoin blockchain. Um, internally, we are using this data for testing, but, but everyone is free to use this data for whatever they want. Um, we also want to host um, bootstrap nodes that are based on, on Forest. Um, this is to reduce the, the, the single points of failures and to hopefully lower the cost of running the infrastructure that is necessary for Filecoin. Um, very soon uh, in Q1 and next year, we will be running our own RPC nodes, um, both um, light nodes that will only have 2000 uh, tip sets um, of, of like the recent history um, and also um, free to use and, and publicly available RPC nodes that will have access to the entire Filecoin blockchain. Um, and that's, that's all my updates. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, David. On to the next speaker. So ME21, I'm gonna go not too deep, uh, but give people a little bit more details of what you can see being able on the file queen network next. So the upgrade scope, um, I think I mentioned in the last all hands, we are increasing the max uh, sector and deal commitment to 3.5 years. That means that's a two year increasement uh, from today. We are finally getting since that pro rep to the storage provider um, and seeing as a service provider, a lot of the FDM um, improvement related to security and um, related to security and pretty much that's yet, but also we are having a lot of protocol improvement uh, from like code optimization perspective. Uh, first, we are fixing a time sensitive sector act activation epoch uh, overridden by replica update. Uh, what this bug has is like for people who try to extend their sector that has snap deal by the end of a five year long uh, sector, they can create another five year long sector, which is existing our pro rep security timeline right now. We're fixing that um, just before things goes like bad. Um, but also a lot of storage provider and data client has been waiting for this one. Um, post 545, uh, we can see a gas increasement when onboarding file queen plus data. We finally optimized the activation optimization logic in the built-in actor. And we can see a um, storage provider can see a total gas cost uh, drops uh, approximately by 25%. We're hoping with this improvement, people can bring more data onto the network in the next couple of months. Uh, there are slightly adjusted timeline for min, uh, MinNet. As mentioned, it's gonna, it was scheduled to be in November, but because of some reason, I, I was gonna 
um, explain in the next slide, but it's coming in two weeks, December the 12th. Um, and our implementation team have already shipped stable release uh, for the upgrade that include Lotus, Venus, and Forest. Uh, please update you know, your node as soon as possible. We did have some challenges uh, in shipping this network upgrade. Uh, during the um, calibration net is the pre-production network. We test our protocol changes before shipping things to the mainnet. And we did discover some bugs with regarding to the FIP uh, 70, which is allowing source driver to move information um, in this network upgrade. We, we found a bug, we proposed a fix. Uh, however, calibration network actually called it uh, during the testing process and the implementation team were able to work together really quickly to restore the calibration network's uh, health. Um, after fixing the bug and the chain help, again, when we reviewed the code, we found another critical bug in the minor actor logic. Uh, at that point, we have agreed, all the implementers and core dev have agreed that the, um, this fit, the implementation itself is too risky to ship into the main network production network right now. And we have decided to scope that from V21 so that we can have a stable uh, running network. Um, during the whole experience, we think it's a great demonstration of the ecosystem ability to actually di diagnose and mitigate, mitigate issues when we found them. And also thanks to the forest, like all these code names are from awesome <laughs> forest like release names. Uh, they are very funny, so I put it there. Uh, but also like learning from this experience is like uh, we also realized the sector scheduling uh, in the minor actor is just too complicated for us to be touching it so if we want to seek for protocol improvement opportunities over there core devs or implementers or like community members we should come up ways hopefully to simplify the logic so that we can improve the protocol uh, in the longer term um, as for, uh, with regard to this fit, the authors and implementers will keep looking into the design and redefine the implementation and hopefully enable this feature for the storage providers in a future upgrade. Uh, super quick one. Um, even though it was uh, a, a massive month for us, um, uh, we launched both Lily SAS and the calibration net called Baklova. Uh, at uh, Istanbul, and and as uh, Eisen mentioned earlier, um, uh, we peaked at well over uh, our, our quarterly goal of 10% uh, of Gollum uh, use cases in the day, or excuse me, uh, per day. Uh, to be clear, that it, that was a peak, and we're still trying to figure out um, um, a steady state. Um, but Lily SAS is the website that that offers the ability to execute against the um, uh, back of the or excuse me the. Uh, uh, Lilypad network and is going really well. Uh, we also had a hackathon, which went really well. Um, uh, the winner was uh, the cute name, a uh, hugging Lily, where people were able to execute a decentralized uh, hugging face against Lilypad as well. Uh, so things continue to progress really quickly. Uh, we would love people to come join, give us feedback. Uh, there are plenty of bugs out there, make no mistake. Um, but it's been really a really exciting month and um, uh, lots more to come soon. Hey, hey everyone, I'm Mikhail, I'm product manager on Interplanetary Consensus. So Interplanetary Consensus is a revolutionary blockchain technology that is built to enable planetary scale Web3 apps. So it's highly scalable through spanning new subnets, customizable by adding features to your subnet stack, and dynamic by extending blockchain to browsers and mobile devices. So we had a lot of stuff going on last this month, so we shipped milestone 2.5 that enabled like new stack that's called Fender Mint that includes Comet BFT based consensus. This is off the shelf consensus framework that we used. We moved from Lotus to Rust based blockchain implementation for subnets. Uh, we, and by doing so, we're making first step towards, towards fully modular blockchain stack that will help customers to customize their implementations even more. We rewrote our IPC solidity contracts and created new IPC CLIs that allows you to run commands in a command line without without enabling the daemon. Also, we're working on Mycelium testnet, which will be a first L2 for Falcoin based on IPC, and it's going to be up very, very soon. So please try uh, uh, in a few weeks. And let's talk a little bit more about upcoming releases. We plan to release M3 in Q1 2024. 
So it will be audited and production ready. It will use federated validation instead of permissionless for the first version. It will enable mycelium general availability. So like the mycelium network will be in production and we'll have quite a few launch partners, including Fluence, Lilypad, Filecoin Station, Slash Spark, and Lighthouse. Later this year, <clears throat> uh, thank you. People think mycelium is a great name, and I think so as well. So later in first half of 2024, we enable M3.1 when it will enable fully permissionless mode, including slashing, fraud proofs, and also enable general message passing. Not only funds can be passed between subnet, but also general messages and contract invocations. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Because I want to quickly mention uh, interplanetary consensus track on LabBig 2023. It was a blast for us. We had uh, more than 320 registrations. We had seven partner talks. We have three launch partners, including Lilypad, Fluence, and Falcoin Station. Three developer workshops and uh, huge snaps to our DX team. And generally, big thanks to all organizers and uh, participants. We will be publishing videos early next week and looking forward for you uh, to, to share it with all of you. And that's all of my update. Hi, I'm Andy Jackson with the uh, Lotus Miner team. And uh, we took on a project. Uh, we called it the Sturdy Post project. Um, to uh, say, what if we tried to get to 100% uptime upgrades and a, a Lotus Miner uh, environment that could auto recover from failures, could handle any of the systems having uh, the power plug pulled at any point in time and auto scale. Um, so this big project uh, has now uh, started to land uh, with phase one. Uh, being here in uh, 125.1 RC1, uh, landing this week. Uh, this part will have a window post and winning post, um, as well as a multi-minor ID, although the multi-wallet uh, still needs to, uh, to have improvements in the next release. Um, and uh, the plan is now to take these enhancements and roll it out across the ceiling stack and other tooling components that uh, relate to the miner. So on the next slide, we've got um, how this works um, and what it offers uh, from high availability and decentralized task management, uh, which brings the uh, the scale benefits um, to uh, database based configuration. So rather than wandering a bunch of machines, you tell the database how you want things to work and all of the machines just look there. Uh, this automatically works, uh, balances the work, and uh, the uh, Lotus provider instances are aware of the cluster. So any member of the database cluster can go down without a problem, and any Lotus provider can pick up any other Lotus provider's tasks if it stops responding. So that maintains this uh, this high availability uh, environment. Uh, most importantly, it is optional in this release. You can still run the old minor worker combination. Um, and uh, we have uh, phase two planned and uh, we're moving forward on that for ceiling tooling and uh, a better boost integration. Hey, Patrick here. Um, for station on November the 8th, we, we launched all payouts for people running station nodes. Uh, the payouts are linked to the first module on station, which is called Spark. And Spark makes retrieval tests to Falcon storage providers. Um, it's really trying to improve retrieval incentives and retrieval success rate on Filecoin. Um, when we launched, we had about 50 stations running and our Q4 target was 500. We passed that in three days, which is pretty cool. And then it's continued to grow. And here we've got a measure of IP v4 slash 24 subnets making requests. We've actually got many more actual station instances making requests. And we've got people hacking around trying to find ways to spin up stations here, there, and everywhere, as, as well as a whole bunch of people running the desktop app. Um, the desktop app is where we really want to see more people um, spend their time, I suppose. Uh, so please tell your friends to download the app and get started. You don't need any technical experience or, um, or you don't need to stake anything. You just need to download and get going. Um, what's next? We're going to improve the in-app experience and help people understand more about what they're doing and how they're earning. Um, in order to get more desktop app operators. 
and then we're really analyzing the spark protocol because we're seeing some really cool stuff really interesting stuff around the retrieval space and we hope that can lead towards a higher retrieval success rate uh, down the line uh, also we are a launch partner of ipc as mikhail mentioned so we're just um staying in, staying in touch with that and trying to uh, be one of the first people on the mycelium testnet um thanks uh, I'm Roth again, uh, talking on behalf of the Saturn team. So as a reminder, Saturn is a crypto incentivized decentralized network for delivering content around the world. Now, almost exactly one year ago, uh, Saturn launched uh, as a network for node operators. And that network has grown incredibly rapidly over the last year. And at this point, it has already achieved 25 terabits of capacity. So what does it mean to say we're doing a private beta launch now? Well, uh, now the Saturn team is ready to start onboarding some customers for the delivery side to take advantage of this network. So this was announced uh, just at Lab Week, and we're going to start onboarding some original uh, OG customers here. Um, this has involved putting a portal up. If something's on there, like doing metering, billing, actually authenticating so that things, you know, get billed to the right people. And behind the scenes, there's a lot of work going on on increasing reliability and observability to see how this rolls out. Uh, the first real customer is going to be onboarding and should be live before the holidays. It's a nice Christmas present or any other holiday that you choose to celebrate at this time. Um, and as a call to action to all of you, we are planning to have five to ten private beta customers we've received a lot of inbound interest there's been over 50 uh inbound requests to potentially be a part of this beta but if you have a great option for a website that is at this point already using content addressing that is a requirement please either fill out have them fill out this form or ping ansgar on Falcon slack and we would love to potentially get them into this private beta and with that, we move on. Yeah, so uh, with Lab Week, uh, last, a couple of weeks ago, we launched the public uh, beta for the DStore REST API. For those of you that have tried to make deals to flow data on the Falcon network, you know it's not the easiest thing in the world to deal with directly. And so we've been spending our time building out an interface that ideally is SD compatible and enables easy data storage on the Falcon network. The goal is to get to an extremely simple post and get operation for putting data and retrieving it from the Falcon network. Right now, what we've released with is, as you can see, post, get, and a get status, uh, which is the initial interface that's been implemented uh, already once that was supporting in a private beta and a few other implementations and test. Uh, we've got people on both sides of the marketplace experimenting with this and working closely with the team, providing feedback, improving the story, and helping us make a more robust uh, pathway to enabling data storage solutions on the Falcon network. Uh, scan the QR code if you'd like to participate and give this a try. We're definitely looking for more people to work with and, and more opinions together. Uh, focus areas for the team now are figuring out how we can actually support ACLs and get their permission retrieval. And we're starting to think through the story for data deletion. And so expect many more updates from us in the coming months. We're excited to go on to next steps and make this thing more available and provide a nice interface for other services to be built that get more data onto the Falcon network. Thanks for the time. Hi folks, uh, so we are two days away from the very exciting Phil Bangalore. It's a two day conference uh, happening in India. Uh, so far there are 1,850 accepted attendees. Of this over half are experienced developers, about 20% are founders. So it is going to be a really engaged crowd. And uh, there are seven tracks across a mix of main stage programming, uh, three different workshop areas, three different big breakout spaces and a lounge. And we have a bunch of folks traveling from uh, all over the world from PLFF, as well as a lot of contributors from the PL network and the community based in India. Uh, you all can also support those of you who are not traveling to India, you all can also support this virtually. Uh, just click on the track planning sheet that I have linked over there. And you will see a sheet called suggestions for deep dive topics. Currently, we have basic and uh, intermediate level workshops planned for all of these attendees. 
but we would love to have topics that you really care about in your project uh, also discussed by the few brave souls who will handle this audience of almost 2,000 people. Uh, so yeah, we'll do our best to communicate the, your problems uh, and things that you would like these developers to work on to them in the breakout spaces and hopefully bring back uh, interesting people, more interesting people to the community. Thanks. Thank you for having me. This is my first time attending the Endres All Hands, so it's been really fun just listening to all the cool projects you're all, you are all working on. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Rio, and I am the events lead at Spaceport. Our team just executed um, Lab Week just two weeks ago, um, and I'm here to share the high-level recap of all the amazing things uh, that happened at Lab Week. Um, this will be really quick. Um, as you know, the network includes over 250 teams that are working on breakthrough technology to push humanity forward. The goal for Lab Week is to bring all of these teams together to and others to coordinate, innovate, and to build. Uh, we had an action-packed week in Istanbul. Um, I'll get more to this later, but we had 54 events, uh, which is great because in general, we saw lower participation than we had hoped for this year due to budget constraints um, and safety concerns. But we had a ton of people show up. Um, and while our team is still working on gathering all of the post-event data, we saw over 4,000 registrants, um, had over 100 speakers, and over 80 collaborators um, participate in Lab Week, which is 2x um, more than Lisbon, um, which I think is a great um, accomplishment uh, for all of the teams um, since it was one week compared to two from last year. Uh, so the 54 events, um, anything from conferences to workshops, hackathons, happy hours, uh, you name it, we had it all, and we had main core uh, PL events like PL Summit, Filecoin, IPFS, everything you guys have been discussing this all hands. Um, and we also had network teams um, come in and have sellout events like ZK Accelerate, DSI Community Conference, and Rep Connect. Um, they're very pleased with the event um, and are looking to partner with us more in the future. And we also had the unique opportunity to collaborate with the DevConnect audience, um, like special and surprise workshops with Vitalik on site. Um, and I'm sure um, some of you also attended DevConnect. We really focused on the overall event experience this year. So if you were there in Istanbul, I hope you enjoy the high production value, uh, the immersive brand experiences uh, like the Cube, um, and activations like PL Lounge, Mosaic Wall, um, and whatnot. A humble brag for our marketing team, um, they saw 15.9 million um, impressions on social media, uh, 91,000 uh, engagements, and 31,000 um, people reading the Lab Week newsletter. So lots of eyes on Protocol Labs um, this fall and all of the amazing work that we're doing. And uh, I also hope you guys saw a ton of improvements to the Lab Week website. This was a main focus of ours, and the product team shipped a number of products uh, like the events portal and registration with NFT ticketing. Um, if you guys used it, um, please let us know how the experience was. Um, but other network teams were very ex excited about it um, and asked us to use it at future events like ETH Denver. So this is something we'll keep rolling out um, at PL events. Uh, next slide, please. Holly, did you want to jump in and speak about this? I just wanted to highlight that there was some amazing work around Filecoin profiled there, both across the PL Summit and the various events. Perfect. Yeah. So if you weren't able to join um, in, us in Istanbul, please check out the PL Summit video. Uh, Juan dropped a note in the lobby. So the link is there and, and you can rewatch it um, at your own convenience. And last, just a favor to everyone here, please fill out the survey or DM me with any feedback. Uh, it can be positive or negative. Um, I welcome them all. We are all looking to improve how we can uh, improve the value proposition for stakeholders, um, for PL, for 
the attendees um, and improve things like the experience, sponsorships, um, locations. We are already talking about 2024. Um, so please take a moment to scan the QR code. I will also drop it in chat right after. Um, and we're also working on retros and having debrief calls. Um, so I can share that in lobby as soon as those are completed. And, and that was the recap for lab week. Um, thank you. And for those who are in the chat, uh, the cat appreciation channel was probably my favorite. Um, so here are a few pictures to um, highlight all that went on. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Does everyone have a wonderful remainder of your November, however long that is, and happy holidays because we will not get together again before um, a lot of folks go out on break and hopefully everyone gets a chance to rest, relax, be with family, maybe enjoy some seasonal weather, um, drink some blue vine, something wonderful. Happy New Year all.